this video, you're going to learn how to use but and however. This is a question I got from a student and this is a great question because adding these to your speech will help you add more complexity to your speech and you'll sound more advanced. Of course, I'm Jennifer from jforestenglish.com and this channel is dedicated to helping you sound like a fluent, confident, natural English speaker. Now before we go any further, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell icon so you're notified every time I post a new lesson. Now let's dive in with this video. Let's talk about how you can use but and however. Now, first of all, you need to know that there are many different ways that you can use both but and however as individual words. They both have many different meanings. In this video, you're not going to memorize every different way you can use but or however. We're simply going to talk about one specific situation where you can use both but and however and they have the same meaning. Now that specific situation is when you use but or however in the sense of yet, on the other hand, despite, or nevertheless. So they all have the same meaning. Now, but is a conjunction, which means it's used to combine two sentences, and however is an adverb. So it modifies a verb, but the meaning is the same. Now, we use these when we have two ideas and we wanna show a contrast between those like, two ideas. And you can think of the contrast as one idea being positive and the other idea being negative. And we use but or however to connect those two ideas together to form one sentence. Now, in this case, but and however have the same meaning. However sounds more formal and but just sounds more everyday or casual. So that would be the difference in this specific case. So let's take a look at an example sentence. So I could say, I want to go to the party. I can think of this as a positive idea. I want to go to the party. This is an individual sentence. Now, I could also say, I can't go to the party. So that's an individual sentence as well, but we can think of this as a negative sentence. So in these two sentences, I have a contrast and because of that, I can connect them with but or however, and they have the exact same meaning. So it doesn't matter which one I use. Now to connect them, I would put but or however between the two sentences. So I'm going to take two sentences, combine them and create one sentence. So I would say, I want to go to the party, but I can't. Of course, I wouldn't repeat, I can't go to the party because I don't need that information. It's already identified in sentence one. I wanna go to the party, but I can't. I wanna go to the party, however, I can't. Like I said, however is just a little more formal and since my context is just an everyday situation, going to a party, however sounds a little too formal of a choice, but would be the more appropriate choice because the context is more everyday. I wanna go to the party, but I can't. Let's do this again with two other sentences and we'll see how we can combine them into one. I could say, our sales are up. So that's a positive, our sales are up. Now my next sentence could be, our customer satisfaction is down. So it's a negative and I have a contrast of ideas. So I can combine these two together and form one sentence. Now, because this is a more business expression, however, would it be a more appropriate choice? I can definitely use but as well, but in this case, however, would sound natural. And I could say, our sales are up, but our customer satisfaction is down. Or, our sales are up, however, 
our customer satisfaction is down. In this case, using both of them, it sounds fine, but just in our first example, however, seemed a little too formal given the context. So now you know how to use but and however, so it's your turn to practice. I want you to do the same thing. Have two individual sentences and then your third sentence is going to combine them into one using but or however. Now remember, we need a contrast between those ideas as well to make it work. So think about that contrast, think about your example and put it in the comments below. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button, share it with your friends, and of course, subscribe. Now, before you go, make sure you head on over to my website, j4senglish.com, and download your free speaking guide. In this guide, I share six tips on how to speak English fluently and confidently. And until next time, happy studying. Way to go, awesome job adding some complexity to your speech. I can't wait to read your example sentences and I'll see you in my next video, bye.